Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video I'd like to talk about different test trainers. In particular, I'm talking about airway part test trainers. But to my right, we have a Laerdol Cement. This is a high fidelity mannequin, and this mannequin is very expensive, and it simulates uh, essentially what a patient may do. For example, the patient, this mannequin can vomit, can scream, uh, and you have different controls for this, and we call this high fidelity. To my left, we have part test trainers. And even though they are low fidelity, they have anatomical fidelity. What that means is that the anatomical landmarks are correct. So we can see the mandible, right? We can see the oral pharynx, and we can visualize the landmarks that we need in order to uh, perform airway procedures. And this mannequin is also used for intubation purposes and uh, things of that nature. Now, why do I have these airway test trainers in front of me? And the reason why I have them here is that even though they all do test trainer uh, in the airway department, not all of them are made the same. So I want to start here. This is Laerdol Airway Management Trainer. And if you notice, here I have my back valve mask. And regardless if I have good technique or the wrong technique, I'm still going to have feedback that I have chest rise. Right? So if, if you notice, I'm going to apply my mask on the patient's face and I'm not doing uh, EC clamp or anything, and I'm going to go ahead and ventilate, right? As a student, I, I'm getting feedback that my chest and my lungs are inflating. So uh, it's not really great for teaching airway management techniques in the initial phase for a novice. If you look here, if I, have, if I apply my BVM and I go ahead and ventilate, absolutely no chest rise is seen. So for the initial phase, for the novice, you want to employ this uh, airway trainer. This is, by the way, Laerdal Risasi Any. This is the old school CPR mannequin. Now, I want to show you how I teach the students uh, uh, in terms of ventilation. So, this this mannequin, by the way, does not accept any type of adjunct. You cannot place an OP or an NP. This, however, can. Right. So, what I do is I stretch my cuffs. I place it on the patient's uh, nasal bridge. And then I'm going to go ahead, extend the head over the lanceo-occipital joint, and I go ahead, connect my BVM, and I ventilate. And now we see chest rise. This is also a great time to teach uh, how to employ two-hand technique. And for this, uh, another instructor is going to come and assist me. So the way I start this technique is I tell the students to disconnect the mask. I tell them find the cuffs, extend the cuffs, find the bridge of the nose, place it. So then the cuffs seal the soft tissue, creating a better seal. I then go ahead, put two thumbs down, find my mandible, and extend the, right, the jaw into the air. So the lower teeth are in front of the upper teeth, and I extend the head over that lanceo-occipital joint. My partner's going to go ahead and squeeze. I see chest rise, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6. So if you notice what I'm doing, I'm engaging on 5, and my partner squeezes on 6. 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5, 6. Right. And this is how you want to train your novices uh, to ventilate a person on this mannequin first. Now, when they transition to this one, certainly, yes, you could show them how to place different types of adjuncts, right, and how to, how to do that. And this will accept all these adjuncts. Now, should you still use this to ventilate? Yes, you can. After they learn the procedure and they build that uh, muscle memory in their hands, now you can come over here and my partner is going to assist me. I'm doing exact same thing, right, that I just showed you, placing on the bridge of the nose, engaging the mandible, and extending the head. So now, if you notice that the technique portion is performed, and my partner now go ahead and squeeze the bag, right, so everything is being maintained, right? Three one thousand, four one thousand, five, squeeze, right? So first, they learned the technique on this mannequin, and now you could transition to employing this mannequin for your airway stations. If we move to my left, you have two other mannequins. This is Laerdol Little Annie QCPR trainer. And what I noticed if students went through an airway station prior to the CPR and they used this mannequin for the entire time, they never learned to do the head tilt. So when they're learning CPR, what you really see is they're placing the mask and they're unable to get chest rise. And then we have to correct them in order to right, do head tilt chin lift in order they get chest rise. And they don't build that mind-muscle connection because they saw chest rise no matter what on this mannequin. Now, here we have a NASCO uh, salad mannequin. And salad stands for suction assisted, suction assisted laryngoscopy, airway decontamination. So it used for uh, into, um, essentially performing advanced airway management while patient has 
some sort of vomit or blood in the airway. But you could still use it in your BLS stations. Now, if you look inside the box, yes, there's lungs. Uh, and if I do ventilate the patient, you do have inflation, but this is not what this mannequin is intended to do. The purpose of this mannequin is you're going to run your, uh, let's say, fluids. You could mix, right? some coloring, let's say blood or vomit, and then you're gonna go ahead and pump, and what will it do? It will uh, contaminate the airway. You will see a lot of vomit or blood, depending on what you put in the airway, and what you're going to train your students uh, on the BLS level is use the suction in order to suction the airway, and once the airway has been cleared in this dynamic process, you're going to go ahead and ventilate them with your BVM. And you could train them to alternate between ventilation and suctioning, going back and forth. So they, they, they ventilate, and you say, all right. And then you pump on this, and you'll say, oh, you, you can hear breaths going. You see, again, blood or vomit in the airway. So the students will stop, and they will go ahead and suction and return back. So these are different test trainers to learn different skills. And once the student is able to perform this, th these skills, uh, instructor can use this as a gauge to see if the student is ready to perform this in the field. So we can have a checklist and an assessment tool where we see the student perform the skill in the lab, the instructor makes sure they follow the steps, and if they're successful, they're cleared to perform the procedure in the field, uh, in the ambulance, for example, on the rotation. In addition, this is an excellent way uh, to have self-deliberate practice. So you could break the students into smaller groups, give them a checklist of all the steps they need to do, for example, make sure scene is safe, have a proper BSI precautions, check their equipment, find their landmarks for the airway, and they can practice together and have the students being the self-evaluator using the checklist. And from this, once the skills are built up on different task trainers, then we can go ahead and transition into high fidelity simulation, such as the cement here, and then you could build your scenarios where you have a, you will say you have a 65 year old male, patient found unresponsive, right? You hear snores, respirations, and here you could simulate the entire dynamics of the scenario where students come in and address all those points. But uh, you wanna use the test trainers, so they take all the heavy damage and beating and tearing because they're low cost. This is very high cost, so you wanna, you wanna use it only once they learn the skills and practicing in a group setting. Uh, in that dynamic and you also employ things like debriefing tools and, and things of that matter. On this channel I'm going to uh, upload more videos of this type of content where I'll have tips for the instructors and I'm also going to provide videos where I explain different skills in the whole detail utilizing evidence-based approach.